Welcome back. Uh, the new parliament is officially going to be inaugurated today. The historic Sengal finds its place in the new parliament building. It has been placed right next to the speaker's chair in the Lok Sabha chambers by Prime Minister Modi just a short while ago. Adhinam Sayers handed over the Sengal to Prime Minister Modi a day before the inauguration of the parliament. The Prime Minister uh, took a swipe yesterday at the Congress for not giving this historical scepter, Sengal, the due respect that it deserved. There's been much political controversy and slugfest over the inauguration of the new parliament. Be it who is inaugurating, be it the date of inauguration, uh, be it the Sengal, Opposition parties have come together, 20 opposition parties have come together and boycotted the inauguration ceremony, the official ceremony which is going to be underway in a short while from now. 25 parties, however, are in attendance. Let's just break down for you um, the events of this morning. If you're just joining us, it all started at around 7.15 this morning when Prime Minister Narendra Modi entered the new parliament complex. Uh, he was accompanied by Lok Sabha Speaker. Om Birla, the two uh, offered flowers at the Gandhi statue, followed by a prayer after which uh, the Sengal was purified and installed in the new parliament. That was then followed uh, by an all-religion prayer which was conducted. The Prime Minister has now departed only to come back for a formal inauguration ceremony. So if you're just joining us, those are the events that have unfolded this morning. Adhinam heads of 19 months accompanied the Prime Minister for the inauguration of the Parliament. All of them, uh, remember, had met the Prime Minister at his residence yesterday and he's learned to have spoken to them about their contribution to India's freedom movement and how that hasn't been highlighted in the past. So much politics really has been played uh, you know, over this entire issue with the government very proactively saying that you know, the, the, the Sengal has in fact uh, not been given the respect that it deserves something that this government has in fact done. Uh, the Congress, of course, coming out and saying that, you know, this is not something that actually symbolizes the transfer of power. So, like I said, much political controversy over almost every single aspect of this momentous day. Um, the Sengal was presented to Prime Minister Modi yesterday, but it was also presented to him at a more formal ceremony this morning. In fact, those are the pictures that you're seeing on your screens. Uh, it was purified in a ceremony and then uh, further the Prime Minister was seen walking into the chambers with the Sengal in his hand and installing it uh, in the chambers right next to the Speaker's chair. So the Prime Minister led the prayers. He was accompanied by the Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla. It all began at around 7.15 this morning. After uh, installing the scepter, Prime Minister bowed his head to the pontiffs who were present and sought their blessings. The inauguration ceremony has two parts to it. The prayers and the Sengal ceremony, the installation of the Sengal ceremony, which is all now concluded. Um, the Prime Minister, of course, also honoured workers who helped build the parliament. Remember, this is something that has happened in record time. And like I've been saying, there's been a controversy over the timing of the parliament construction as well. The opposition had raised questions of the government even during uh, the groundbreaking ceremony of the parliament, the Bhumi Poojan of the parliament, because that had all happened in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, well, you know, the controversies of it aside, uh, there is a jam-packed schedule for uh, the formal inauguration ceremony. The puja and honouring of the workers has been completed. Uh, the dignitaries have taken a tour of uh, uh, the parliament. There will be movies shown on the new parliament in uh, the latter part of uh, the inauguration ceremony. There will be a message of Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar that will also be read out. The Prime Minister and the Lok Sabha Speaker are also expected to speak. Nearly 60 religious heads have been called for the event, many of whom are from Tamil Nadu. Adhinams or Mats of Tamil Nadu have... Uh, a history, interestingly, of resisting upper caste domination and are known for taking religion to the masses, many of them hundreds of years old. Uh, the Sengal, which was first received by Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru from the British, had been kept in a museum in Allahabad until now. Uh, it was now placed, it has now been placed next to the chair of the Lok Sabha Speaker in the new building. The Congress, of course, has rejected the BJP's claim that the Sengal symbolized any kind of transfer of power from British to independent India. BJP leaders, including Home Minister Amit Shah, has hit back, saying that the Congress needs to reflect on its behaviour. Mr Shah also rejected the Congress's claims that there was no evidence of the Sengal being a symbol of transfer of power. Like I said, a political slugfest has ensued with 25 parties that will be attending the ceremony, but 20 parties that have also called for the boycott of this ceremony. 
Uh, in the studio with us, Sanjay Singh, senior journalist. We have Mr. Makan Lal, uh, historian and professor. Uh, but before I go across to uh, the guests joining me in the studio, I want to first uh, go to my colleague Megha. She's joining us live from outside Parliament. So Megha, first half of the ceremony early this morning that began around 7.15 has concluded. The Prime Minister has departed but only to come back in a short while from now for the more formal inauguration that will follow, uh, you know, break down the developments for us. Yeah, that's correct. So the, uh, you know, the first half of uh, the celebrations that were planned or rather the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the puja in the morning. So the uh, traditional bit, I think, is almost over because when the Prime Minister comes back at about noon, uh, 12 o'clock he's expected back in the parliament premises and then after that, after the Prime Minister comes in the formal event which is where all the politicians uh, from the political parties uh, who are of course uh, attending today's event, they all will be present but apart from them, there will be a whole lot of dignitaries I'm told. Uh, there have, invites have gone on to prominent personalities to various different sections in the society. Uh, they all will be there, 11.30 is the time we have been told that everybody has been asked to be seated and then 12 o'clock when the Prime Minister comes in, uh, you know, the function begins. Of course, the highlight will be, I think there would be a presentation again, a whole uh, entire video maybe of the history and of the new parliament that has come up. Apart from that, you will have one of the main things that you will have is the messages of the President of India and the Vice President of India that will be read out by uh, uh, Mr. Hariwansh is what, as, as per the plan which is there right now. The Prime Minister and there are of course lighting of lamp etc. Uh, a national anthem will also happen. Our Prime Minister is to take the stage uh, by around 1 o'clock or so, 1.30 uh, we are told you know the function uh, is going to get over. So basically uh, inaugural the inaugural function or dedicating this parliament to the country, to the people of this country, is going to happen between 12 and 1.30 today. Uh, having said all of that, and we've of course discussed the plan uh, quite a bit at length since morning, there is of course the other aspect, which is not only of the opposition boycotting, but also of a call uh, by uh, uh, several people from different groups who are saying, you know, the Mahapanchayat, etc., that they will come and uh, protest close to the parliament. Will they be allowed? These are a section of people who are connected and are supporting the restless protest. Uh, there are those, of course, uh, who are, uh, you know, uh, those who have been connected in the past with the Mahapanchayats. Uh, they all want to walk towards the parliament, come and sit, do a sit in dharna in front of the parliament. Well, but today this area has been turned into a fortress, a huge big fortress. Will they be allowed anywhere closer? Are we looking at some situation where there would be a friction? Uh, will that the day will tell right. as it progresses? But a huge, uh, a huge, hugely significant day, nevertheless. And right. once you know the parliament gets dedicated to the country, Rishika, today, uh, this would, in many people's mind, mark a new beginning, perhaps, uh, when it comes to the democratic processes in the country. Well, one sincerely hopes that it is, uh, it is a new beginning in more ways than one, Megha. But very interesting because you've just highlighted uh, some important aspects, you know, which is the fact that, uh, uh, you know, there has been a controversy or an opposition in a certain sense to every single aspect of this ceremony, whether it is who is inaugurating, the date that it is being inaugurated upon, uh, on, uh, uh, you know, the significance of the ceremony itself, the Sengal, the scepter that has just been installed in Parliament and, uh, uh, you know, Delhi's borders are sealed. The, the parliament area where you're reporting from at the moment has been converted into a complete fortress. Take us through a little bit, uh, uh, you know, on, on what really are the arrangements that have in fact been made in order to ensure that it is smooth sailing for the rest of the afternoon. The entire of this uh, central Delhi, you know, Latin's Delhi, uh, there have been restrictions. Uh, put in different places. So, for example, even for us today, uh, we were not able to get to Kartavipath or the Rajpath as earlier known. Uh, even there, vehicles were not allowed. Also because not only the Prime Minister, but several other dignitaries, the entire of the cabinet, the movement is going to happen, keeping security uh, in mind. Uh, many of these areas have been blocked off. So, uh, you know, while it's difficult even for people who are holding passes, 
you know, or the rel relevant clearances to move their vehicle in that area, even they are finding it difficult. People like us who carry our uh, accreditation with us, for us also to take our vehicles inside areas that they have, uh, you know, cut off, uh, it's not easy. So uh, for the protesters who are, A, of course, located in one place, uh, the wrestlers and the supporters there, or right. even uh, the other ones who have who have called for uh, the uh, protest, they will not be, from what I understand, they will not be allowed to leave the location they are in, let mm. alone get anywhere closer to the space. So while they are, uh, you know, announcing their protest, etc., I think it's, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to even get out of the place they are. So, and then, you know, this is just the first bit that's gotten over. The Prime Minister and this whole lot of invitees are going to start coming in, uh, say, before 11 o'clock or so, because 11.30, right. they actually stop all the entries. Prime Minister comes in at 12. So, you will really not see much of a movement unless everything gets over, say, by 2, 2.30 or so. All right, and uh, Prime Minister Modi, in fact, replied to Shah Rukh Khan on Twitter saying it's beautifully expressed. The new parliament building is a symbol of democratic strength and progress. It blends tradition with modernity. So that, of course, was uh, the brief Twitter exchange between the Prime Minister and Shah Rukh Khan. And uh, there was a tweet that was put out by Shah Rukh Khan where he talked about the parliament in that Hindi and English uh, voiceover. Uh, joining me in the studios, like I said, Sanjay Singh, senior journalist, Makan Lal, uh, historian and professor. We also have uh, Geeta Bhatt, political analyst with us in the studio. Thank you all very much uh, for being with us. You know, we've been talking, uh, uh, Geeta Bhatt, you're just joining us. We've been talking about, uh, you know, what we've essentially seen through the course of the morning. Uh, the first half of uh, the parliament inauguration ceremony essentially now concluded. The puja has happened and, you know, the scepter has been placed uh, uh, next to the speaker's chair and, and I'm not getting into the politics and the controversies of it just yet. We're going to talk about that. But your first impressions of what we've seen through the course of the morning. Well, uh, well a very uh, historic and uh, momentous occasion uh, for the country where we see that this new parliament building, which definitely is an iconic building, uh, representing the uh, democratic thought process of this country, and also embracing the cultural hues and traditions of this country in its design, uh, in, the, in the concept with which this new building has been made. And this is an occasion which needs to be celebrated and needs to be cherished by every Indian, irrespective of to whichever uh, you know, ideology they belong, because this is the uh, building which is a, a parliament building which is there for each and every Indian, for all political parties, those who are going to get elected in the, you know, in the uh, next election or in innumerable elections which are going to take place in this country. They are going to sit over there and they are going to ponder and a large number of historic decisions, bills are going to be placed. Uh, the future of this country is going to be decided. Uh, by the elected representatives who are going to sit in this new iconic right. building. And I think one important aspect which we can add to this new parliament building is also that, you know, in this process, especially since we are celebrating the 75th year of our independence, hmm. this is also in a way moving away from, you know, the whole colonial mindset which has been uh, very overpowering for the last many decades. And also in, in the way we had, uh, we were running our systems, the way uh, we time and again there have been that, uh, you know, a large number of uh, uh, important institutions, architectures which are present were there built in the colonial period. So I think it is also in a way uh, coming out of that thought process also right. and uh, this building is definitely going to be uh, uh, the uh, a building which is... Uh, going to take right. the country as now everyone is saying that in new India, a new okay. parliament. You know, new India, new parliament, but Sanjay Singh, big questions about, you know, how we've seen parliament function. Uh, one sincerely hopes that while we're talking about new parliament, we're also talking about a new era as far as parliamentary democracy is concerned. Uh, and, you know, the reason why I keep bringing up what the opposition has said and what has happened and the controversy surrounding this, this parliament is because it has symbolized a certain breakdown of ties between opposition parties and the government. 
um, and that's not good for for parliamentary democracy. The fact that 20 opposition parties are boycotting a momentous occasion like this doesn't all go well. Uh, so many questions really on on what's been happening inside parliament. You know whether it is repeated disruptions, whether it is disqualification of uh, members, whether it is the lack of a robust debate and discussion over several important issues. Uh, you know, do you hope that this will perhaps usher in a new era? Too many questions. So two three aspects to that. Uh, a functioning of parliament. See uh, the disruptions and the lack of communication between ruling party and the opposition that is being much talked about today uh, has been there for uh, past two three decades. Uh, as for disqualification, we also saw disqualification of a large number of MPs uh, during UPA era on uh, something which was called cast for question and 1718 I think MPs were disqualified. Uh, if you are talking about Rahul Gandhi's disqualification, he was disqualifying as per the law led by the parliament and the ordinance which Rahul Gandhi tore. Unfortunately for him, uh, the, this came back to haunt him. Uh, subsequent to Rahul Gandhi's uh, disqualification, another MP was also disqualified. Not much talk about that. Uh, the communication between government and opposition, I think that is a two-way process. Uh, so, uh, the government has to take initiative. Uh, in uh, During UPA era, we also uh, saw uh, complete breakdown of communication between government and uh, what happens, the opposition has to first reconcile to the fact that somebody has come to power and there has to be, you have to be a constructive opposition than a cynical kind of opposition to oppose to oppose. And if you see people actually punish such parties, hmm. like uh, people punished the BJP in 2009, hmm. because it was going on too much on negativity. People also punished UP allies, which was seen to be obstructing a gentleman, Manmohan Singh, in his functioning, uh, the left and RJD and other right. parties, other political parties. In 2014, Modi came with a positive agenda and therefore people uh, gave the kind of vote they gave. Uh, a full majority government and subsequent again there was uh, he came back to power in 2019 with increased majority. What happens people keep on watching as to how things are progressing the proceedings taking place within parliament sure. outside of parliament as per the controversy about parliament house uh, see there was complete unanimity uh, somewhere around 2011-12 about need for a new parliament. Hmm. Then Speaker Mira Kumar uh, on uh, her secretariat of course, but mentioning Mira Kumar, the hmm. speaker here, wrote to Urban Development Ministry for uh, the new parliament house. Yes. Jaram Ramesh, who is so vocal now, has actually gone on record saying outdated and so on and so forth, new, uh, sure. why new parliament sure. building is uh, required. And there are a whole lot of other uh, talks within right. uh, parliament and outside I think there are many within the opposition who problem, have come out and conceded is, the fact that a new parliament was needed. The, the questions have been raised about the timing, the questions have been raised about the inauguration, the questions have been raised about who is doing the inauguration and you know I think a, a little bit of historical context here is very important Mr. Lal if you would like can to I throw some light. Come on the question that you are asking me. Can I come on? Sure that? please do complete. See, see about the timing there is always a question on timing. If the parliament was needed in 2012, it is needed in 2020. No, or by timing, I mean the, the 28th timing, the of May as a date. The, the, the foundation <laughs> link. The foundation link took place in December yes. 2020, right? When you are re trying to recover from COVID, and Modi had given a slogan, Jaan hai, Jaan bhi, Jaan bhi, I think something uh, uh, like that. And therefore, you had to build, you had to start the work. Right. Country could not sit idle. And remember, people went to court for Central Vista. And court rejected that particular thing. Delhi High Court actually said this is uh, this right. is a, a monument of I think it all, it, all, it all really boils and down when, to building consensus, right? I think that hasn't happened when it comes to some big is, issues like the this. The problem for opposition is when you realize that this Modi is going to build it, it is not us. And plus, it is going to be built in record time. And he's going to be inaugurated. Modi, the problem, uh, now the other problem is, Modi has kind of championed the art of laying foundation stone and also inaugurating right. same project by himself. 
Mr. Lal, you know, would you like to shed a little bit of light on the big questions that have been asked around uh, the constitutionality of the decision of the Prime Minister to inaugurate the Parliament himself? Uh, if, if you look at what we've seen over the course of the last two hours, it has been the Prime Minister entering Parliament, being greeted by the Speaker, the Prime Minister and the Speaker performing prayers, Prime Ministers installed the scepter. So, you know, he's really been at the front and centre of this entire Parliament inauguration. The opposition, of course, has argued uh, that all of this is befitting only of the office of uh, uh, the President and this ceremony, in a certain sense, undermines that. Would you agree? <coughs> Give me a minute. I will come to this question, whether Prime Minister constitutionally is right in inaugurating or not. But first about many questions have been made and we are constantly saying new parliament hmm. no as a historian i will say we never had a parliament the building that was there if you look at lutian and barker's entire note hmm. and also the correspondence with the british government in england it was a viceroy council and princess chamber and legislature three functions were there concept of a free democracy free parliament was not there imbibed into that building that building was colonial structure with colonial mindset and colonial scheme well Princess there are many who would disagree with your point of view no but no i'm not talking about okay. what was its name before it came to be known as parliament yes just uh, they may disagree everybody as a democrat as a academics i give due respect but look at the name before 1947. Right. It was Princess Chamber. It was Vice Chair. It was never built with the design that Indian Parliament elected representative would sit here. Sure. And that too, almost about seven, eight. But they years. have for decades, the, and it has functioned we, for decades. That's we that. somehow yes. managed. Yes. This is for the first time you have your own building, big name Parliament, Sansad, concept, need, and design as per the thing. Okay. So we must say for the first time for me as a historian, here is a parliament and my appeal okay. to all would have been it's a made the in Princess India parliament. Chamber, come to the parliament okay. building. It's a made in India parliament. Made in and now let On us the come, let us, uh, I'm yes. coming. When Jawaharlal Nehru was there as Prime Minister, right from Bhakra Nangal Dam to all other things, IITs and our aims, name one institution that was inaugurated by Rajan Prashad or by Radha Krishnan. Prime Minister has been chief executive and always inaugurated. Today we are talking about sanctity of parliament being inaugurated by Prime Minister. What happened within the same premises, a few meters away, more in bigger area, library building was inaugurated by Rahul Gandhi, Rajiv Gandhi. Similarly, NX which is part of the parliament. You Can can't we say compare that dams and libraries with the parliament? I'm not so sure. No, but, huh? but I, I get what you're saying, that there is a historical context to it. My question was more on the constitutionality of it. Historically... I'm exactly, I'm coming on that. Where in the constitution written that in this building, this kind of building will be inaugurated by prime minister, this sure. building will be inaugurated by president, where in it is written, either in the constitution or procedure and so on. Today, all those who are raising this question, I feel very hurt when constantly a president is referred as Dalit president. He's a president of India. I'm proud of him. President Murmu is president of India. I don't want to think they're tribal president. We must learn first to be proud of ourselves and at the same time, don't play politics with constitutional position. President is constitutional position. Prime Minister is constitutional position right. and where in, in the constitution it is written that such and such So you are saying essentially that there is nothing unconstitutional Nothing unconstitutional, nothing, nothing unconstitutional and let us put it this way, 12 petitions have been filed till yesterday to stop this in Supreme Court, all have been thrown out, right from layout plan to use of land to Covid sure. to all kinds of things. Have you seen in last three years a single step positive by opposition? Problem is, in India, opposition doesn't think that he has won. They think I have lost. 
which is bad, negative thinking. Appreciate who has won. Well, there's except. nobody from the opposition, unfortunately, on the broadcast to counter what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to be playing devil's advocate when it comes to that. But I think no, you I'm raised. I think you raised. I think you raised a fair point as far as historical precedence is concerned. No, but but Sanjay Singh. No, but but Sanjay Singh, you were mentioning something very interesting, which is you know the issues that have been that have been raked up by the opposition, and there has been an opposition to. Uh, every single aspect of this particular inauguration, even the Niti Aayog meeting yesterday uh, that was chaired by the Prime Minister was boycotted by 11 chief ministers. So, you know, th th there is, in a certain sense, a breakdown. See, that's a very unfortunate aspect, uh, the Niti Aayog meeting that you mentioned. Uh, prior to that, uh, during COVID period, when uh, Prime Minister was holding meeting with chief ministers, it was very welcome to see that they came on one platform and sharing their views. And uh, that also had very beneficial results on the ground uh, for the country as a whole, right. in all spheres of term. Now, when you start opposing almost everything that Prime Minister Modi initiates, hmm. be it Statue of Unity, be it uh, hmm. War Memorial, be hmm. it PM's Museum, be it Central Vista Project, uh, one unfortunately gets an idea or perception uh, perception builds that uh, you are not against a project per se because that You're project is right person. or wrong. You are against that particular person. Hmm. Now what happens is symbolism, everything, some any building, why a name is given to a building? Hmm. Because you identify that uh, name particularly conveys a certain kind of message. Hmm. Therefore, you uh, whatever uh, monuments that you build, you give a name. In this particular case, unfortunately for them, that name, even if that name is not there, the visuals of Modi is going to last for centuries. I'm saying centuries. We are talking about Latians, Bakers, Lord Irwin. And at the same time, even then, we are also talking about Motilal Nehru. Now mm. that controversy has built up. Mm. That Motilal Nehru was present uh, in right. that inauguration when uh, Lord Irwin did that. And uh, the king's message was read out. Now, the, this new parliament, there is no question, no dispute about, sure. as I said, some people are actually now trying to build a dispute as to why, uh, if there was a, if at all there was a need, like uh, Nitish Kumar said, Atlas Yadav said, and some other people are also saying that. Right. Uh, his party president Lalan Singh is on another another extreme that they are not going to use it once they are. Well, well, that, 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 that's that's a whole that's a whole different so, story. But I want to I want to from from the political on, aspect of it very quickly. I want to just also talk about uh, you know the other big uh, uh, you know the other big. Uh, a uh, momentous thing has been the uh, you know the idea of the scepter that's first been sort of discussed and put out in the public domain a very rare press conference by uh, home minister amit shah who actually announced that the scepter is in fact going to be installed in parliament and we've seen that installation ceremony uh, geeta but before we also have an interview in fact uh, with the adhinam who was given the task of making this scepter and we're going to play that out in just a moment but your views on the installation of the scepter well uh you see, um, uh, when the press conference was done by the Home Minister and uh, when the, that the Sengol is going to be installed in the Parliament, it came. Uh, the way uh, the opposition uh, parties, you know, they, the way they try to play around it and especially with respect to Congress, because we know that uh, it is now very well documented and there are a large number of uh, documents which have come, whether it is in the, with the Tamil government or even a Time magazine report of uh, 25th August 1947, which talked about the independence. There also, this has been mentioned, you know, that the that uh, Sengol a specter was given to the to Pandey Jawaharlal Nehru at that time. Uh, in this context, how they try to, uh, you know, in a way disown that this uh, specter was actually given to uh, Pandey Jawaharlal Nehru and the way Mr. Jaira Ramesh came out, it was something which was not required. Right. And considering that, as I said, that this parliament building is actually in its, you know, the in its uh, soul and in its structure is representing the Bharatiya tradition, the Bharatiya culture. And therefore, this Sengol, which is actually representing in a way dharma or dharma or nyaya ko jo represent karta hai, you know, justice and dharma, 
a representative of justice and dharma that it is a symbolic representation of how for centuries uh, you know in this country uh, you know the kings were expected to right. uh, uh, administer and function in a particular style where they delivered justice to the people sure so it is with this thought that the sengol has been okay. presented well the sengol has been I, uh, has been installed in parliament and in fact uh, uh, the, the adhinam who was actually given the task of making this scepter in 1947 spoke a short while ago with ndtv let's just listen in aur vela kurchi adina de mund kal dal meri request ki aur bhi All right I'm afraid uh, we don't have that interview just yet we'll try and play that out uh, for you in just a bit but uh, sorry uh, okay we have it now let's just let's just play it out Paral mandram thirukapara ullade namadu thirukailaya parambarai thiruvavurudu aadinathilirundu 1847 ilendru Jawaharlal Nehru avargalukku thangachengol vilangapattathu andha thangachengolai indru இன்றைய பாரத பிரதமர் நரேந்திர மோடி அவர்கள் இந்த பாராளுமன்றத்திலே வைக்கப்பட உள்ளார்கள் என்பதை மகிழ்ச்சியுடன் தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கிறோம் ஆல் ரைட் சோ தி அதினம் தேர் கீதா பட் சேயிங் தட் யூ نو தி செப்டர் ஹஸ் பீன் गिवन इट्स ரைட்ஃபுல் பிளேஸ் இன் 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 பார்லிமென்ட் வெரி இன்ட்ரஸ்டிங் அப்சர்வேஷன்ஸ் மிஸ்டர் லால் தட் யூ ஹேட் ஏர்லியர் அபௌட் தி செப்டர் சோ லெட்ஸ் லெட்ஸ் ஜஸ்ட் டாக் a little more about you know what this scepter symbolizes for the benefit of the viewers who are just joining us um and and you know what the positioning of the scepter at this particular place where it's been placed and you can actually see that in the pictures on your screens right now prime minister modi installing the scepter it's been placed uh, uh, you know right next to the speaker's chair so what does this essentially symbolize you know as i mentioned earlier that first mention i mean detail mention of scepter is in paninis that's almost about 3000 years ago and then detail you get into kautilya darshat and smritis this is symbolism exactly like you are thinking in terms of flag flag is ultimately you don't want to, to see it to fall similarly scepter is something which keeps reminding king to be just to be beneficial and to be looking at welfare of their people and its positioning as you asked that its positioning i think it's very important where it has been put up in the parliament remember that everybody sits as a member first prime minister also sits first as a member and then only he is a prime minister or anything else the scepter is not kept near the prime minister parliament chief is speaker and a speaker it is also not beside the speaker it is little away from his own chair beside and higher in pedestal that symbolically says that this scepter is the highest in the hierarchy of everything and that has to be respected along with that and scripture is always given to the ruler with lot of mantras abhi mantras and meaning thereby there is a kind of sanctity of god involved in that and like you see symbolism in the flags a pride similarly in scripture a image of god is seen and that is where smriti is really point out that this is not a dand alone this is the god's dand and any king going wrong he will stand destroyed by the very same the noble years will come sure so actually a kind of divinity has been accorded to dand and it has always been after all when charles was recently i mean recent phenomenon i am talking about when he was given this scepter what symbolized it meaning thereby now you are king accepted by god himself and that kind of this symbolism has always been there but then Not there would be there would the be children. question there would be questions asked about you know annotations to king and you've been appointed by uh, by god himself i mean all of that does that really apply in a no, certain no, sense no no not appointed by god you have been elected by the people in democracy you have been appointed by god in monarchy sure but not here you it's are talking it's important that you clarify that in this yeah, context yeah uh, uh, you have been elected as a ruler right. you have elected as chief but you cannot break away from your tradition you know science can forget its history but not the society people cannot forget their own history whether you and i cannot forget our own family our own you know ancestry 
and therefore it's very important you live actually you look forward to the future with your past with your as a strength and when king is today after all prime minister has taken place of right. king as a ruler so that symbolism of scripture uh, remains it's okay. the only the form of ruling and form of the governance have changed but not that concept that after all concept is truth right welfare okay and people should be treated equally that should be whether it is well, monarchy have, or whether it is it should be there everywhere right we've talked i think a lot about uh, uh, the installation of the sengal what it symbolizes again like i said divergent uh, that the divergent views questions that have been asked over this particular installation as well it has just concluded now the first half of today's inauguration ceremony in a certain sense is uh, complete with the puja that has taken place the installation of the sengal that has taken place a more formal inauguration ceremony of the parliament will begin in a short while from now uh, but before we go into that let's just play out for you a special report on the historic speeches in parliament long years ago we made a trip with destiny and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge aap sara desh chalana chahte hain badi achhi baat hai hamari shubhkamnaye aapke sath hain hum apne desh ke desh ki seva ke karya mein jute rahenge hum sankhya bal ke samne sar chukate hain aur aapko vishwas dilate hain ki jo karya hum apne haath mein liya hai wo jab tak rashtra ke uddesh pura nahi kar lenge tab tak vishram se nahi baithenge tab tak aaram se nahi baithenge मैं अपना त्याग पत्र राष्ट्रपति महोदय को देने जा रहा हूं प्लेस 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 आई एम अ मुस्लिम एंड आई एम एन इंडियन एंड आई सी नो डिस्टिंक्शन बिटवीन द टू आई सी नो रीजन व्हाई आई एज अ मुस्लिम हैव टू फियर अ डील बिटवीन इंडिया एंड द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका If we pursue the vision I've described today, a global partnership to meet global challenges, then I have no doubt that future generations, Indians and Americans, will live in a world that is more prosperous and more secure and more just because of the bonds that our generation has forged today. So thank you. And Jai Hind. And long live the partnership between India and the United States. let us seize it for india for america for all those with whom we share this small planet and for all the children that together we can give such bright tomorrows thank you very much